Break the scene into beats. Beat number one. Exterior, bazaar, linen stall. The sign over the Arab vendor's stall reads lingerie. Vendor's action, selling. He shows Ilsa a lace bed sheet. Arab, dialogue. You'll not find a treasure like this in all Morocco, mademoiselle. Rick's action, approaching her. Ilsa's reaction, ignoring him. Without looking, Ilsa senses Rick's presence. She feigns interest in the lace. The vendor holds up a sign reading 700 francs. Arab, dialogue. Only 700 francs. Beat number two. Rick's action, protecting her. Rick, dialogue. You're being cheated. Ilsa's reaction, rejecting Rick's advance. Ilsa takes a second to compose herself. She glances at Rick, then with polite formality turns to the vendor. Ilsa, dialogue. It doesn't matter, thank you. To win Ilsa away from Laszlo, Rick's first task is to break the ice. No easy task given the recriminations and angry emotions of their last scene. His warning seems to insult the Arab vendor, who takes no offense. But in the subtext, Rick's words hint at more, her relationship with Laszlo. Beat number three, Arab, dialogue. Ah, the lady is a friend of Rick's. For friends of Rick, we have a small discount. Seven hundred francs, did I say? The vendor holds up a new sign. Arab, dialogue. You can have it for two hundred. Rick's action, apologizing. Rick, dialogue. I'm sorry I was in no condition to receive visitors when you called on me last night. Ilsa's reaction, rejecting him again. Ilsa, dialogue. It doesn't matter. Arab, dialogue. Ah, for special friends of Rick's, we have a special discount. He replaces the second sign with a third, reading... 100 francs. Rick's protective action of the first beat comes naturally. The apology in the second beat is more difficult and rare. He masks his embarrassment by using excessive formality to make light of it. Ilsa is unmoved. Beat number four. Rick's action, excuse-making. Rick, dialogue. Your story left me a little confused, or maybe it was the bourbon. Arab, dialogue. I have some tablecloths, some napkins. Ilsa's reaction, rejecting Rick for the third time. Ilsa, dialogue. Thank you, I'm really not interested. The vendor quickly leaves. Arab, dialogue. Only a moment, please. The Arab vendor enriches the scene in a number of ways. He opens it in a comic tone to counterpoint a dark ending. He sells lace, which adds connotations of weddings and the sexuality of lingerie. Most importantly, however, he tries to sell Rick to Ilsa. The vendor's first line declares Rick a treasure. To demonstrate the power of Rick, the vendor drops his price for friends of Rick's. Then, hearing something about last night, the vendor cuts it even more for special friends of Rick's. This is followed by Rick's second reference to his drinking, as he tries to make this take the blame for his insulting behavior. Ilsa will hear none of it, and yet she stands and waits, and it's safe to assume she's not waiting to buy lace. Beat number five. A small silence as she pretends to examine the lace goods. Rick's action? Getting his foot in the door. Rick, dialogue. Why'd you come back? To tell me why you ran out on me at the railway station? Ilsa's reaction opening the door a crack. Ilsa, dialogue. Yes. After hearing no four times in a row, Rick wants her to say yes to anything, so he asks a question that supplies its own answer. Her quiet yes opens the door, keeping the chain on, perhaps, but indicating she's willing to talk. Beat number six. Rick's action, getting down on his knees. Rick, dialogue. Well, you can tell me now I'm reasonably sober. Ilsa's reaction, asking for more. Ilsa, dialogue. I don't think I will, Rick. The taciturn Rick insults himself over his drinking for the third time. In his tough guy manner, this is begging, and it works. Ilsa demurs, opposing him in a mild, polite way, yet continuing her lace-buying guise. To paraphrase her subtext, that begging was nice for a change. Could I hear a little more, please? 
Beat number seven. Rick's action, guilt-tripping her. Rick, dialogue. Why not? After all, I was stuck with the railway ticket. I think I'm entitled to know. Ilsa's reaction, guilt-tripping him right back. Ilsa, dialogue. Last night I saw what happened to you. The Rick I knew in Paris, I could tell him. He'd understand. But the Rick who looked at me with such hatred. These two people have a relationship. Each feels that they're the injured party, and each knows the sensitivity of the other so well that they hurt each other with ease. Beat number eight. Ilsa's action, saying goodbye. She turns and looks at Rick. Ilsa, dialogue. I'll be leaving Casablanca soon. We'll never see each other again. We knew very little about each other when we were in love in Paris. If we leave it that way, maybe we'll remember those days, not Casablanca, not last night. Rick's reaction? Refusing to react. In the subtext, Ilsa's kind, forgiving prose is a clear goodbye. No matter how well-mannered, no matter how much her language implies her love for Rick, this is the kiss-off. Let's be friends. Let's remember the good times and forget the bad. Rick will have none of this. He reacts by refusing to react, for ignoring someone's action is, of course, a reaction. Instead, he starts the next beat. Beat number nine. Rick's action. Calling her a coward. Rick, dialogue. Did you run out on me because you couldn't take it? Because you knew what it would be like hiding from the police, running away all the time? Ilsa's reaction, calling him a fool. Ilsa, dialogue. You can believe that if you want to. Rick's had a year to figure out why she left him, and his best guess is that she was a coward. She, however, dares death or worse with Laszlo every day, and so she insults him in return with a cool sarcasm that implies, I don't care what you think, fools believe such nonsense. If you want to join them, believe it too. Beat number ten. Rick's action, sexually propositioning her. Rick, dialogue. Well, I'm not running away anymore. I'm settled now. Above a saloon, it's true, but walk up a flight. I'll be expecting you. Ilsa's reaction, hiding her reaction. Ilsa drops her eyes and turns away from Rick, her face shaded by the wide brim of her hat. Despite her denials, he senses that her feelings lean the other way. He well remembers their sex life in Paris and has seen the cool, aloof Laszlo. So he takes a chance and propositions her on the street. Again, it works. Ilsa, too, remembers and hides her blush under her hat brim. For a moment, Rick feels she's within reach, but he can't resist sticking his foot in his mouth. Beat number 11. Rick's action, calling her a horror for the second time. Rick, dialogue. All the same, some day you'll lie to Laszlo. You'll be there. Ilsa's reaction, crushing him with the news. Ilsa, dialogue. No, Rick. You see, Victor Laszlo is my husband, and was, even when I knew you in Paris. With dignity and poise, Ilsa walks away, leaving the stunned Rick to stare after her. Rick can't contain the pain caused by Ilsa's abandonment. As in the climax of their previous scene, he strikes out with a sexual slur, implying that she'll betray Laszlo to come back to his bed. Called a slut for the second time, Ilsa reaches back for the hardest thing she has and strikes Rick with it as hard as she can. Notice, however, that this is a half-truth. She doesn't add that she thought her husband was dead. Instead, she leaves a terrible implication in her wake. She was a married woman who used Rick in Paris, then walked out on him when her husband came back. Therefore, her love was never real. We know from the subtext that the opposite is the truth, but Rick is devastated. You will not find a treasure like this in all Morocco, mademoiselle. Only 700 francs. You're being cheated. Doesn't matter, thank you. Ah, the lady's a friend of Rick's. For friends of Rick's, we have a small discount. Did I say 700 francs? You can have it for 200. <laughs> I'm sorry I was in no condition to receive you when you called on me last night. Doesn't matter. No, for special friends of Rick's, we have a special discount of 100 francs. The story had me a little confused. Uh, maybe it was a bourbon. I have some table called some napkins. Thank you. It's, I'm really not interested. Please, one minute, please. 
Why did you come back? To tell me why you ran out on me at the railway station? Yes. Well, you can tell me now. I'm reasonably sober. I don't think I will, Rick. Why not? After all, I got stuck with a railway ticket. I think I'm entitled to know. Last night, I saw what has happened to you. The Rick I knew in Paris, I could tell him he'd understand. But the one who looked at me with such hatred... I'll be leaving Casablanca soon, and we'll never see each other again. We knew very little about each other when we were in love in Paris. If we leave it that way, maybe we'll remember those days, not Casablanca. Not last night. Did you run out on me because you couldn't take it, because you knew what it would be like, hiding from the police, running away all the time? You can believe that if you want to. Well, I'm not running away anymore. I'm settled now. Above a saloon, it's true, but the walk up a flight, I'll be expecting you. <laughs> all the same, someday you'll lie to Laszlo. You'll be there. No, Rick. No, you see, Victor Laszlo is my husband. And was, even when I knew you in Paris. <laughs>